10 of Professor Carl Scott's Administration of Computer-Based Systems MIS course for the University of Houston. Uh, this is spring semester 2012. This is for lab assignment number two of the semester, and what we're going to be reviewing is the topic of Kane's Law, that the man creates its own supply, and we're going to apply it to the IT field. My name is Charlie Lee. I'm Stephen Jordan. And I'm Jackie Chan. And we're group 10. All right, John Maynard Keynes has been one of the most influ influential people of the last 20th century. Uh, he's made very um, valued contributions to the state of economics, and he was born June 5th, 1883, and he died on April 21st, 1946. He was born in Cambridge, England. He re attended King's College in Cambridge and received a degree in mathematics in 1905. Uh, Keynesian economics was first brought upon through his writings. The first book he presented those ideals within is The General Theory of Employment, Interest, and Money, published in 1936. He believed in a mixed economy with significant roles that include the private and public sector of the economy, uh, which basically that means is that uh, he wanted to see a blend of the private sector and as well as a guiding hand from the government. Uh, much like what we see right now with the financial uh, bailouts with the automobile industry with the United States. Now we're going to take a look at some of John Maynard Keynes' uh, teachings. So what he was concerned with in this particular slide, what we're talking about what his concern was, was the, the ability of individual, rational, microeconomic level actions to affect the bigger picture. So to lead to inefficient macroeconomic outcomes. So uh, a lot of little things could end up making a big, big change in the overall economy. And we know that the economy operates below its potential output and growth when people are uh, not conducting um, efficient microeconomic level actions. So Keane says uh, that he contended that a general glut would occur when aggregate demand for goods was insufficient, leading to an economic downturn resulting in losses of potential output due to unnecessarily high unemployment which results from the defensive or reactive decisions of the producers. And basically what a general glut means is when supply exceeds demand. So it's kind of like when Girl Scout cookie cut time comes around and it's right after the first of the year, everybody's on a diet. So you got all these Girl Scout cookies and nobody to buy them. When referring to the Keynesian economics, that's a debate between, between the Keynes theory and the Say's law. Um, Says uh, is trying to say that supplies pretty much create its own demand, and that's two main points to his theory. And that is, products are paid for with products, and a gut can take place only when there are too many means of production applied to one kind of product and not enough to, other, to another. And he is the traditional econom economist that take crew from the 18th and 19th centuries that promotes the ideas such as the laissez-faire and uh, free competitions. And Adam Smith, David Rapprodo, and Jane Baptiste is belongs to this group. And basically what traditional economists believe is that uh, the market will write itself and definitely what Keynes economics, economics, economics explains is that that's not the case. A, it's definitely much more complex than it is. And what made Keynes so controversial at that point in time was that he did not agree with the traditional economic viewpoint. What he believed was that aggregate supply and aggregate demand led to determine output and employment. Without the demand of products made by labor, availability of jobs will be low. Without enough jobs, working people will have inadequate income, leading to insufficient demand of products. Um, that's the neoclassical theory. Labor and money are the two main costs of shifting demand and supply. So basically, if people have the money and are employed, they're willing to spend the money and create the demand for the goods and services that are going to be supplied. So now we'd like to contrast the two different views, uh, the traditional view versus Keynes' uh, neoclassical view. Now, traditional view says that wages and prices are completely flexible. So if supply is high, then prices are going to drop until quantity demanded and quantity supply are equal. That's the more commonly known law of supply and demand. And it says that if there's not enough jobs, then wages are going to fall until quantity demanded and quantity supply are equal. So basically it's saying nature will write all things. But in Keynesian uh, neoclassical economic theory, 
He says that production is based on expected consumer demand or expected consumer spending, that full employment is possible when total spending is adequate. So he's saying that vice prices uh, responding to um, demand on their own, that um, consumer demand is based more on consumer spending. Yeah, so basically it just means that demand dictates supply uh, whether the, within the context of labor and money uh, within with that particular context. We will now begin to look at how demand creator is on supply and how Indonesian economic apply to the Western Europe economic and a number of Western eco Western European countries have been borrowing costs at about 7% and public debt is approaching 120% of the GDP according to an article in the Economist. And there's a number of austerity policy institutes to lower spending and reduce the amount of benefits and uh, public service. And austerity is often used in during the financial crisis, and it is used to cut the deflict and increase the taxes. And that is uh, expectation in re in 2012 for recession for the uh, Western Europe. So basically, we're going to use the Western European example to outline Keynesian economics and how demand uh, affects supply based on his principles. Um, on the next slide, we're going to see how that impacts the PC market within Western Europe. European countries. So as a direct example of uh, what Jackie was covering just a second ago, we can look at PC sales in Western Europe. And you can see that there was a 16% decline in PC, PC shipment in the fourth quarter of 2011. The professional segment declined 13.5%. Consumer segment declined. Mobile PC and desktop PC even uh, declined. Uh, consumers are migrating to smartphones, media tablets, and e-readers. But overall, the decline is uh, larger than would be expected, just viewing it as simple supply and demand, as traditional economics might view it. So instead, you can look at this from a Keynesian economic standpoint and get a different end result. Uh, definitely. And when we're going to look at the next slide, it's just going to be an outline of what the PC vendors have experienced during this economic downturn in Western Europe. Uh, you have the top PC vendors, which is HP. They experienced a decline of 15%. Also, Acer, who's number two, has had a decline of 46%. Uh, the only ones that have really seen an increase was Aces, and they've embraced the tablet, uh, media tablets. So definitely within that market, Western European, due to the prices, uh, smartphones, e-book readers, and so on and so forth, have been much more attractive, creating that demand. Uh, that's creating that demand that will commemorate with the supply of those uh, particular media outlets. Now, as a result of the grim economic outlook, uh, there's definitely less jobs available on the market, which leads to less consumer spending due to the restricted flow of cash because of the available jobs at this point in time are limited. Now, the crunch is also felt in the private sector as well, as decreased spending within that sector has limited jobs. Um, as you can see here by this quote, Western Europe is not only struggling through excess PC inventory, but economic upheaval as well as I just illustrated through those two examples that uh, I just spoke upon. Uh, the reports also reflect that pricing was aggressive and many deals were offered during the holiday season. Even with those discounts, the sales of PCs still declined. And this is kind of a contradiction of the traditional economic viewpoint. Uh, the viewpoint of dropping prices will go ahead and increase demand and level out both outputs. This is not the case, as you can see here. Uh, due to the financial crisis, in unemployment concerns, spending has been limited in the PC market. Aggregate, aggregate demand is limited, and aggregate supply of PCs surpass that need. That why we, that's why we have that excess PC inventory in Western European markets at this point in time. As you can see in specific uh, instances here, the PC markets of Italy, Greece, Portugal, and Spain have declined 30%. And Spain has one of the highest unemployment rates in the Western European region at this point. So that's a direct con uh, con contribution to the decline of PC sales within that market. The UK has experienced declines for five consecutive quarters as a result of the economy and austerity. 
affecting the education segment. So the budget cuts in the education segment has definitely taken a hit within the UK market, limiting PC sales within that region as well. France has experienced decline for six consecutive quarters due to, due to difficult economic environment that squeezed consumer spending. Another example of Keynesian economics, demand dictates the supply. So to conclude our point regarding this example, uh, you, you should know that the demand for PCs is waning not only in Western Europe, but in the US as well due to economic circumstances and the introduction of tablet computers. Um, many PC vendors are focusing on China as an, mar as an emerging market for PCs as aggregate demand is increasing. Uh, in China, the country is ever expanding, so they're actually one of the few places where you can find PC consumption on the rise. And what you can note from all this is that Keynesian economics had kind of fallen by the wayside from the 70s throughout the middle of the 2000s because the economy was strong, and so those traditional viewpoints of economics actually held fairly true. But when we got into trouble during the 2007-2008 financial crisis that's extended even through to today, you can see that Keynesian economics has seen a resurgence uh, as of late, and then it holds true in the long term for us. And that was the point of this whole lecture and these examples that were included with it. For the purpose of our presentation, these are websites that we use. And if you want to learn more about our 